Hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And I am really excited for this conversation because it's one that got me thinking super hard. This week, we're moving out of the theme and the conversation around learning who you are. And we're going to be taking the information from the past couple of weeks and tying everything really nicely together and transitioning into um, the practical application of why you are. And we're going to begin with this very simple question. Why do you do the things that you do? And as I say this, you're probably wondering, girl, what are you talking about? But it's a good question. There was a whole other episode that I did earlier this season. I believe it was episode six. Come on, baby, light my fire. You guys remember that episode? Are you truly living for yourself or are you living in pursuit of purpose or praise? This question in particular is different from what was asked in episode six because it's based on having an understanding of your why. Why do you exist? What do you live for? And are you truly living your life with joy at the forefront? I think of the question of why and if something is in pursuit of purpose or praise as I'm engaging in my relationship with my children, as I'm engaging in my relationship with my husband, as I'm engaging with in relationship and conversation with my family members, my sisters, my brothers, my parents, um, and even as I engage in conversation with my clients and my students. Anytime someone brings a goal or an idea of something that they'd like to pursue to me and they ask my thoughts on it, I always bring it back to them and asking them, well, why? Why is it that you want to pursue this particular thing? Why is it important to you? But more importantly, how does it actually correlate to your joy? And I think that this is so necessary because I truly believe that as you begin to ask yourself this question, you will find that answering that one simple question will begin to uncover so much about who you are The moment you're able to find your way back to that is the moment that you're able to uncover true fulfillment. And you're also able to live a life that puts you on path for blessing others, enriching other people's lives, and generally finding the confidence to to go after the things that you really desire for yourself and in an aligned way. You won't have to drag yourself to do anything anymore because you'll want to do everything. That's tied to your purpose. All right, I'm not going to get off track here. So my main question for you to consider as you listen to this episode today is, do you live for purpose or for praise? And this conversation is inspired by my childhood, but it's also inspired by motherhood. (laughs) Surprise, surprise. It's like, this is just a thing. You guys should know this by now. And the reason why is because as I watch our children grow, namely Aria, because she's the first, you know, and... As much as she's growing and learning about herself, I'm also growing and learning about her as well. But I find that a lot of times as I watch my children, I also learn about myself because it then causes me to reflect back on certain parts of my life and what motivated and inspired me um, as a child. And I don't know if all parents think this way or if it's because this is really intriguing for me and the things that I do for a living. But I find that parenthood has been one of the greatest catalysts for just self-awareness. And as a parent, one of the biggest parts of the gig, if not the biggest part of the gig, is preparing your children for the world. Am I right? And Understand that even if you aren't a parent, this also applies to you. If you're a teacher, if you're a mentor, if you're an older sister to someone, if you're an auntie, you guys get the idea, right? So I started praying for my children and I also prayed for my ability to lead them as a a parent. Over the past three years, one of my biggest prayers has been that our children are purpose led. Are you guys still with me? And the reason why is because one of my, I don't want to call it a fear, but one of the things that I don't want for our children is for them to wake up at like 30 or 35 or approaching 40 and realize that they don't know who they are anymore, that they don't know what they want, or that they feel as though up until that point, they haven't lived a life that has brought them joy. And I can say that because I know all too well what that feels like. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, if you've been following me on social media um, or my journey to purpose as an entrepreneur, you know that this is something that I speak about all the time. Around 21, I graduated from college and I realized that 
I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what brought me joy. And I had to go through this whole journey of self-rediscovery in order to really understand who I was, but more importantly, what my purpose was here on this earth. And I've now gone through this three different times, and it's part of the reason why I work specifically with people who are in transitional phases of life. So if you can't tell by now, purpose is a very important thing to me. Like it's very important. And so to support our ability to guide our children with purpose, every year we do an exercise. If you guys have visited the site, you guys know that vision boards are my jam. So at the start of every year, I do a vision board myself, but I also take time to do a vision board with the kids. And yes, they're only five years old and they're only three years old at this point, but it's important for them to understand the value of having a vision, but also the power of manifesting your vision and your dreams by stating your dreams and your goals with clarity and intention. It's really cute. It's a really fun exercise to them. I'm sure it's just cutting and pasting. They're just there for the glue sticks and the magazine cutouts. <laughs> but what they don't know is that they're also sowing seeds that will really help them cultivate a practice of intentional being. But in addition to doing this vision board, I have a conversation with them around the vision that they're putting together. I also make it a point to ask them the same question every year. What do you want to be when you grow up? Recently, as I've been asking Arya this question for the past two or three years, her answers have been pretty consistent. She wants to be a doctor and she wants to be an artist. And because you guys know I care about the why, I ask her, Aria, why do you wanna be a doctor? Why do you wanna be an artist? But one thing I'm also very aware of as I have these conversations is the fact that I don't wanna be hovering over her or dictating to her what her purpose should be. And I want her to think about these things because I want to make sure that she's not simply saying these things to pacify us or because she thinks that those are the right answers. But I mean, she says she wants to be a doctor. She says she wants to be an artist. We're here for it. Listening to her responses got me thinking back to my childhood and my responses when anybody would ask me, Erica, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would say four things. When I grow up, I'm going to be a lawyer, singer, psychologist, or an actress. Like, I thought it was so cool that I knew exactly what it was that I wanted to do. And in bringing it back to this topic in today's conversation of do you do the things that you do for purpose or praise, when I really think about those four things that I mentioned, I now understand that I was saying those things both for purpose and praise. <laughs> Let me explain. But first, let me put on my jacket because it is getting type chilly. Back then when people asked me what I wanted to do and I would name off lawyer, singer, psychologist, or an actress, I didn't completely understand what was so appealing to me about each of those potential professions. But what I did understand was that every time I seemed to rattle off that list of four career options, a lot of people seemed very impressed by it. And so I played it up and I played into it. <laughs> At one point while I was in high school, I believe it was probably around my freshman or sophomore year, I was rummaging around my parents' house and I was downstairs in the basement and I found a law book that my father used while he was in college. My father didn't study law, but, but he got a master's in communications and journalism. So I don't know what he was doing with this law book, but I saw it and I was like, ooh, this seems interesting. And and so at one point I started to study the law book. I would read it. I would carry it around with me at school. Um, I thought it, it was kind of cool that I could learn some legal terms. And I don't know, I think more than anything, I just like the idea of sounding and looking and seeming very smart. There goes the for praise bit. <laughs> Are you guys starting to see where I'm going? But when I think about the singing bit, that is something that truly resonated with me. I loved singing. I always sang a ton. But at that point, when I started rattling it off as a career option, I really began to engage with the conversation of being a singer. I started singing more in public. I started writing songs, um, performing in school assemblies and auditioning for school choirs and solos. And I did musical theater throughout middle and high school. It was a thing. Singing definitely brought me joy. I believe that that one was for purpose. As far as the psychology bit, I already really liked asking questions, but I thought the idea of being a psychologist sounded really cool. Just that I 
just the ability to understand the way that people think, but also why they think the way that they do. But I didn't understand then just how much this frame of thinking and just how much my inquisitive mind would actually play into some of my future endeavors. I think that that one was also for purpose. <laughs> And lastly, when I think about acting, I think I just really like the idea of being famous. And as a kid, I think that, you know, a lot of kids and a lot of people think that being famous is kind of cool. You think about the fact that you could have a lot of money. You think about the fact that you could have a lot of no notoriety. You think about the fact that you have the power to influence things and go wherever you want and do whatever you want. And... I think for a really long time, I don't necessarily know that I considered acting to be a real job. I just wanted the nice things that came with acting. I left the idea of acting alone just based on the idea that there may be expectations of me to play certain roles that I may not be comfortable with. And so and I figured if it was something that I really wanted to do, I would find my way back to it later in life. So far, that hasn't happened yet. In the meantime, as I considered the question of whether or not I really wanted to pursue acting, I got clear about why I wanted to be an actress and why I considered it. And I'll get to that in a minute. I started to consider which of these four things I really wanted to pursue very seriously around my sophomore year of high school. Because, you know, at that point, you have to start thinking about college. And you have to think, when you go to college, what is it that I'm going to study? And because I didn't want to let my parents down, and because I didn't want to rack up a bunch of student loans, and I didn't want to waste anybody's time or money, namely mine... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I went into college prepared. I wanted to go in knowing my major. I wanted to study my major and get the four years out of the way because I had plans. But funny enough, I've learned that I actually didn't really want to be any of those things. Hear me out. As I've learned more about my joy, I use a lot of the skills that are used in each of those professions in my current role as a entrepreneur, more specifically as a joy strategist and a creative consultant. Keep listening. As a lawyer, you advocate for your clients. As a joy strategist, I advocate for my client's version of success, okay? I advocate for the things that bring them joy. I advocate for their purpose. I advocate for them really creating an environment for them to live their best life possible. And by best life possible, I don't mean the one that is necessarily the sexiest. I don't mean the one that necessarily pays the most, um, though ultimately that is something that I definitely want for my, my clients as well. But what I desire for them most is that they live a joy-filled life. And when I say that, I mean their version of joy-led success. Not the version that sounds good to their auntie, not the version that looks good to their boss and coworkers, not the one that sounds good to their mama and them. No, I get very clear about what their vision is, how their joy contributes to it, and how it's aligned with their purpose, and then I advocate for that version of success. As a singer, I sing all the time. You guys have heard it here on this podcast. If you follow me on social media, you may hear or see a tune or two. And it's something that I talk about all the time. But I also use music as a healing tool within my programs. If you've ever participated in one of my LRM challenges, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I'm no psychologist, but I am definitely still motivated and inspired by the way that people think. But taking it a step further, as a joy strategist, I still seek to understand the motives and intentions behind people's thoughts, actions, and behaviors. Uh, and more importantly, how all of those things contribute to their identity. But my goal as a joy strategist in evaluating all of these things is to optimize their thoughts, motives, intentions, behaviors, actions, and habits for joy. <laughs> Point being, I still ask a lot of questions and I still care a lot about the way that people think, but 
really because I want to help you who's listening or you being a client best understand why your joy is so important and how to align all of those thoughts, behaviors, actions, and intentions with your joy so that life becomes a lot more fun, a lot more fulfilling, a lot more energized, and a lot more joyous. (laughs) Bringing it to this last profession as an actress, at one point, I got very clear about the fact that I didn't want to be an actress, but I understood why I had considered it as a potential profession. And that reason being that I don't like doing the same thing over and over and over again. And at one point, when I considered that question of what do you want to be when you grow up, I realized that I didn't want to be working in an office. I didn't want to be doing the same thing every day. And I just wanted to have a lot of variety in my day and the ability to do a lot of different things. And when I thought of a profession that would allow for that, acting seemed to fit the bill. Why? Because as an actor or an actress, you are constantly taking on new roles. And with this, you're able to learn a lot of things about a lot of things. As you prepare for your characters, you have to study. And the best way to study a thing or study a person is to research the character, to research the time period in which the story is taking place, to um, train yourself. Like there's just a lot that goes into acting. And I realized that acting was one of the very few professions that allowed this opportunity for play and research and trying out and trying on a lot of different things so naturally it seemed like i'd want to be an actress but then i also later on realized that acting is hard (laughs) i don't think that a lot of people realize how hard acting is after i did it for a couple of times i was like okay this is cool this is cute but this is not what i want for my life right now But who knows? Maybe I'll become an actor later in life. Now, having said all of that, when I graduated from college (laughs) and it was now time for me to decide or figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, when I was crying every day at the job that I had and I hated, I realized that more than anything, what I desired most was a life of purpose and fulfillment. And when I had to go on my joy quest and my journey to discovering who I was meant to be and what I should be doing with my life, it took me back to my childhood once again. I think it was somewhere around first or second grade. But I remember uh, us doing a play for Black History Month. We got to select the people that we idolized or who we were super inspired by. And then we had to be them for a day and present this play to the entire elementary school and the person that I selected the person that I was so inspired by was Oprah Winfrey (laughs) yeah I've been loving Oprah okay um I chose Oprah and there was this other guy in the class and he chose Michael Jackson and I interviewed him on the couch it was like a whole thing and in taking on this uh role and in taking on this opportunity to be our idols we had to do research so i did research on oprah and i learned about her life and how she got her start i learned at that point that she got her start in baltimore which at the time meant a lot to me because i was a black girl growing up in baltimore so i already kind of felt that connection to oprah um i had to prep for my interview because the person that i was interviewing was michael jackson so i had to do research on michael jackson and his life i had to prepare my questions for this show i wrote my questions up so i was coming to the interview prepared and that night i even got my mother to do my hair in a way that looked like oprah or at least i thought so okay what i really had her do was hot comb my hair because my hair was not relaxed and by the end of the day it looked like a marshmallow but that's neither here nor there years later at the age of 23 when I went back to considering what my actual dream job was I realized that I still wanted to be a talk show host I wanted to interview people. I wanted to talk to people that I found intriguing. And years later, that dream is still happening. I have a YouTube channel. I've done street interviews. I've done celebrity interviews. And now, as you are listening and watching this, I have a talk show. It's a podcast. 
but it's still a show nonetheless. I'm sharing all of this not to give you guys a history lesson or a rundown of all of my dreams and aspirations as a kid, but because I want you to know that your dreams matter and the dreams that you've had as a child and even some of the dreams that you still may have as an adult hold clues to who you truly are and what you are truly meant to be doing with your life even as an adult dreams aren't just made for children if you think that this conversation doesn't apply to you think again. If you're in a position right now where you want to learn how to cast a vision that aligns with your dreams again, or if you're even looking to figure out how to create a plan to make your dreams happen, I want you to keep listening after we take this break for some solutions and joy gems that would help put you on path for your purpose and start living in your dreams once again. Quick question. Are you overwhelmed with life right now? feeling overworked, underpaid, and totally uninspired at a job that you hate? Okay, so maybe you don't hate it, but you definitely find yourself energetically drained at the idea of going to work every single day before you step out of bed. Am I right? Or do you wish that you had the confidence and the discipline to use your creative gifts to create a life that is more fulfilling and purpose propelled? Or maybe, you are just plain old over it. And by it, I mean everything. (laughs) If you answered yes to one or maybe all of these things, I'm here to help you dream again. I would like to invite you to join me for a 90 minute masterclass for women and entrepreneurs who want a roadmap to feeling less overwhelmed, less overworked, and more connected to their dreams and goals. You'll walk away from this Journey to Dream Masterclass with tools to assess what's keeping you from living a life that feels good in every area of your life. But more importantly, you'll gain the clarity around how to craft a vision that produces an unapologetically beautiful life that is grounded in joy, improving your relationships, your career, your wellness, and even your finances. You'll benefit from this masterclass no matter where you are in life, or even if you're unsure of what your purpose is, whether you're a college graduate that's looking to find work, a stay-at-home mom who's looking to rediscover yourself and your identity outside of your children, or maybe you're even at a point in your career where you're switching career paths or you're ready to enter retirement and you're just unsure of what it is that you wanna do next. The best years are ahead of you, and if you've lost sight of how to get there, I am here to help you rediscover your freedom and joy. If this sounds like something that you may be interested in, please visit the link shared below or somewhere around this screen up here, down there in a comment box somewhere and register for this free masterclass where I will teach you how to journey to your dreams again by creating a system of how you can change your life through joy. I hope to see you there, but until then, I hope that you remember that we're on this journey together, one feel-good thing at a time. I'll catch you in class. Welcome back and welcome inside because it was getting really dark outside and it was also getting very cold. So it is now time to talk solutions and joy gems. I wanna give you guys three main things that you should probably be doing if you are looking to figure out whether or not you're doing something for purpose or praise. And the first thing is to One, get clear. The second thing is to be still. And the third thing is to take aligned steps or actions towards the things that you actually want. So I'm going to break that down and let you know what that could look like um, so that you can begin to implement these things into your own life. But then, you know, I'm going to give you some joy gems to help support these thoughts and actions moving forward. Okay. Let's dive in. So the first solution that I want to share with you guys is to obviously pray, which I stated. Um, And when I say pray, I mean pray for clarity in your vision. That's the get clear bit. But I think before even stating that, we should probably dial it back a little bit. And first, one, 
praying for vision. So many people don't have an understanding of where it is that they actually want to go and what it is that they actually want to do with their life. Maybe you've followed all of the desires and wishes that your parents have laid out for you, or maybe you have done what was always expected and you've been like the top-notch student, which good grades and being a good student is awesome. You got the job that you were supposed to get. You graduated from the place you were supposed to graduate from. You got the partner or spouse that you were supposed to to get like all of these things, all of these goals, all of these life milestones that you wanted to achieve and that you set certain timelines for, you've ticked off all of those boxes, right? Check, 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 check. You've done all the things, but yet and still somehow you are unfulfilled. You don't feel inspired. You don't feel lit up when you wake up every day um, and trying to live, you know? <laughs> you want to do something creative, but you're unsure of where to start or how to get there. Um, maybe you want to try something new or different, but you're a little scared of what that could look like or you're scared to try. If that sounds like you, then at this point, what you really need is a vision, not just simply thinking of a dream or praying for a dream. Pray for the dream that God intends specifically for you. What is aligned with your joy? What will come easily, naturally, flowingly to you? Not something that you feel like you'd have to work super hard for, though there is work that's involved, but it shouldn't be something that goes against who you are or your identity. Um, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so first, pray for a vision. Then after you have a vision and you have a dream, then you can begin to pray for clarity in the vision or, or the dream. The second solution that I wanna share with you guys is to be still and ask for the aligned steps to take towards your vision. Now, I know that in this culture that we currently live in, that probably sounds super counterproductive and it sounds like it's something that would go against the grain, like being rebellious. And in some ways it kind of is because so culture is something that's super glorified in our society. The harder you work, the better you must be, the more money you must be making, the more things you're doing. Like we like to be busy, 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 busy. And that's great in theory, except for then comes the burnout, then comes the lack of productivity, um, and then comes the just generally being busy, but not really actually getting anything done. But the moment we're able to take time for rest, we're actually better able to optimize ourselves to do the work that we've been called to do. And it doesn't look like running around like a chicken with your head cut off or doing all of the things. It's about doing less tasks, but making sure that they are more intentional and meaningful. So it's not just about doing stuff for the sake of doing things, but making sure that you're also doing them um, and creating actual impact, you know? Like how many of you can relate to going to a job, right? And being given a lot of busy work. So you try to spend your day doing busy work when you could do the thing in probably like an hour or two and you could save yourself a lot of time. You could save your, your company a lot of money, but you're sitting around doing all of these things to simply take up time and space. What a waste. <laughs> when you consider what you could be doing with your time or how you could be investing your energy or your attention, it, it kind of is a waste. So instead of just throwing things at the wall and you know hoping for the best, how about you get a little strategic? And the best way to get strategic in how to move forward with your vision or towards your vision is to pray for guidance. And then being still enough to receive the information that the Holy Spirit is giving you, that the Lord gives you, downloading it, processing it, and then creating a plan on how to execute the vision moving forward. You know, working smarter, not harder. And um, one of the best ways to do this is to simply surrender your plan. That surrender really means, and this probably sounds super cliche, but it, it's letting go and letting God, but also more than anything, trusting that the very things that he stated in his word are true. And if those words are true 
and I believe God to be who he says he is, then that doesn't mean that I have to do anything but listen and move with obedience to the things that he's stated. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, and I'm going to be completely honest, this is still something that I occasionally struggle with. Um, just being obedient and surrendering my will to his will, you know, and not necessarily my plans. Cause I believe that I've given, I've given those up and I, I trust this path that God has taken me on, but more than anything, it feels very good to have surrendered. But sometimes y'all, the way in which we want to do things, um, can be very limiting the ways in which we want to do things. Um, because of what we know versus what God knows <laughs> can really inhibit us from being able to surrender the ways that, in a way that is most beneficial for us. By surrendering, you say to God, you know, Lord, I don't really get it. I don't really understand it. I really don't know where we're headed, but I trust you and I thank you. And then you proceed with the vision. You proceed with the, the steps that he's giving you. And with this, I would really encourage you all to pray for an open heart and open ears, because this is really where wisdom, knowledge, and understanding comes in. You can find a lot of wisdom in the word of God. Um, and with that, it almost like trains your, your mind into how you should think about certain things or how you should perceive certain things, but based on biblical truth. And then after that, you gain knowledge because then you have an, a, a knowledge of things. So you know things, but understanding gives a completely different beast because the moment you have wisdom and knowledge, but you're able to implement it or you've lived it personally, you then gain understanding, which helps fuel your faith and propel your purpose in ways that kind of like shoots you to the next level. So in other words, what I'm really trying to say is that you want to be listening and looking out for God's signs and wonders. What's better than knowing that you can speak with God himself? Like ugh, the creator of the heavens and earth of the entire universe not only knows you, but loves you. And more than anything, more than anything, desires to have a relationship with you. Like of all the sacrifices that he could have, the thing he wants most is your heart. You know, like that just blows my mind. So it's like, why not? Why wouldn't we talk to God? And because of the death of Jesus Christ and because of his willingness to be a sacrifice for us, we actually have access to God's ear. Otherwise, we wouldn't have that directly. Okay, so many people take prayer for granted where, you know, you can literally roll over, you can pray in your thoughts, you can pray silently, you can pray while you're doing anything. When just uh, thousands of years ago, in order for God to hear your prayer, you needed to offer a bunch of sacrifices, you needed to go to a temple, you needed to consult a priest. Like if y'all read the Old Testament and, and really read <laughs> all of the things that the Israelites and the children of God had to go through in the Old Testament, you will never want to take prayer or going to church for granted again because it was a task. It was a whole thing. Like when you read off all of the different types of sacrifices that needed to be offered for certain things, certain places, certain sins, how sin would spread throughout the community on account of one person, how you had to be redeemed, and then the priests, how they had to do all, like it was a lot, okay? It was a lot. But we need not do all of those things because we had the one sacrifice, the one person, God himself in flesh form, who came and was willing to be a sacrifice and give up his life so that we would have access to God's ear. <sighs> what a gift. I digress. Let's go back to these solutions. Discern with wisdom which opportunities are actually meant for you and the vision and plan that God has for your life. But the best part about this, and this is something that I find I'm really experiencing more, a lot more now, is that it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> The opportunities that present themselves come with ease, which actually leads me to the third and last solution, which is to take aligned action and pray for a faith-led and obedient spirit. 
And let me tell you guys, it is so much easier said than done. This is literally the hardest part. Once you have a vision, once you have clarity in your vision, you've gotten still and you're now praying for steps to take towards the vision. Once you have that awareness, you now have a responsibility and you have choice because you have options. You can continue to do the things that you were doing before that weren't working for you, or you can choose to try something different that that different thing being the thing that God has told you to do. And sometimes it's so much harder to take that step or move in alignment with those things because we don't know what's on the other side. And that's really what faith is. Believing things as though they were done, though there's absolutely no evidence of those things even existing. It's trust. It's nothing but trust. And the moment you begin to move with that trust, that's when God's faithfulness really begins to show up. But it first comes with making a choice. <laughs> Don't just talk about it, be about it. That's what the faith-led and obedient spirit is. Don't just talk about it, be about it. Sometimes the hardest part is simply saying, okay, I trust you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. And then simply doing the things. Hopefully you're still with me. Hopefully you are able to see examples of this in your own life or you've experienced it personally. And if so, I would love to hear about it. But before we wrap this episode up, you know I have to leave you with some joy gems. And I have three in particular that I wanna share with you. Like really four, but I'm gonna keep it to three because this episode is already getting kind of long. The first joy gem comes from Galatians 1.10 and it says, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Mm, those were some words from Paul. And it's so true because oftentimes when we are living for praise more than we are living for purpose, we're not seeking the praise of God himself. We are seeking the praise or the approval of other men. And men are just men. Ultimately, our main consideration should be who are we in God's eyes? And we already know that we're loved. We already know that God loves us. We already know that um, he cares deeply for us and that he desires to have a relationship with us. So if we know this, like we should really be living to in pursuit of his purpose for our lives. The second joy gem coming from Isaiah 55 verses eight through nine. The Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah, and he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. Oh my gosh. So good. So I didn't just read verses eight through nine. That was actually um, Isaiah 55 verses eight through 11. We touched on this during the solutions portion of the podcast episode, but it really comes down to just trusting that God knows what's best for you and also understanding that we will never never, ever, 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 ever be able to understand the complexity of our lives, okay? And who God is and how he works. We would never even begin to fathom it. If we did, we'd probably literally go insane. <laughs> and even that wouldn't reveal all of who God is and all of his glory. So rather than fighting it, we should surrender and accept it. And the moment we're able to accept that we don't know everything, we don't have all the answers, and we're able to sit with that and relish in that and love the fact that we don't have to know everything in order to do anything, but we can simply trust that God's plans and his way of doing things and his knowledge and understanding of us is enough. That begins to be the moment where we can really relax and enjoy this wonderful ride called life. <laughs> 
The next way gem is Hebrews 11 one. And you guys know that this is one that I speak about often. Like faith is everything because without faith, it's really hard to not only please God, but it's really hard to trust that anything is worth doing. <laughs> but Hebrews 11 one says uh, by faith. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Hebrews 11 in general, the entire chapter is one of my favorites just because there are so many examples after examples after examples of children of God, servants of God, people of God who acted out on things by faith and how they came to manifest. And so it's just a wonderful chapter to read if you are looking to do something without having the full picture, but you feel like you're meant to do it and you're looking for a boost of faith. Hebrews 11 is the chapter that you want to read. And the last joy gem that I'm going to share with you comes from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And it says, But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Ooh. It really... <laughs> coincides with the last solution of taking aligned action, but really praying for a faith-led and obedient spirit. It can be so much easier to do a lot of things, thinking that the things that we're doing are more important than moving um, in alignment with the spirit and moving in obedience to God's voice. And I remember earlier this year having that same moment in co of conviction about doing this podcast on a regular basis um, and something that I still struggle with, which is getting seven hours of sleep and going to sleep a certain time and trusting that the things that I've done are enough and that God is doing his work as I'm doing the work, but not having to work so hard, but really trusting um, that the instructions that God has given me, if I just do those things, he will move faithfully within those things. And I think that this is so important for us as women, especially, um, and also as black women, more specifically, God's got it. We don't have to work hard. We don't have to be strong all the time. We don't have to have all the answers. We don't have to be doing 101 things to prove our worth or prove our value or to prove that we are worthy of the very promises that God has already given us. Sometimes what we simply have to do is ask him what we should be doing and then listening and doing the things that he's told us to do. And a lot of times that doesn't require a lot of extra. We just have to do the simple things, not a bunch of little hard things. Are you feeling what I'm saying? I don't know. I remember reading that uh, scripture and I just remembered having a wave of peace run over me. Like that is so true, man. <laughs> Oh gosh, man. I love faith. Anyway, guys, um, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. I hope that you liked the conversation. I hope that you found it fruitful. Um, I would love to encourage you to visit the site, ericalassan.com and subscribe to our newsletter because in less than four weeks, we are kicking off our Dream Academy, a six-week workshop to help you Focus on your dreams, but more importantly, understand how you can begin to strategize a dream that is in alignment with God's purpose and vision for your life um, and doing it in a way that promotes, obviously, a lot more joy. So um, we're kicking that off with the masterclass, which is happening October 20th. For more details, you can visit the site www.ericalassan.com slash dream dash masterclass. And in the meantime, I want to hear from you guys. When it comes to your life, when it comes to your career path and the choices that you make, are you doing these things in pursuit of purpose or praise? I want you guys to let me know one of those things in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. If you liked it, 
please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are watching on YouTube. And if you happen to be listening on an audio streaming service, please subscribe there as well so that you do not miss any future episodes. Next week, we will be talking about your dreams yet again. But this time, I'll be giving you guys a breakdown and an explanation of what the Dream Academy is, who it's for, and more importantly, why you need to have a seat in the class, why you need to be in the Dream Academy. So I can't wait to tell you all about it next week. And until then, I hope that you have a wonderful day. And if you know that this conversation will benefit someone, please share it with them. Okay. I hope you have a great week. Remember, we're on this journey together, one feel-good thing at a time. All right. Bye.